All right. So during the review, if you have a question, please put a hands up or um, like, you know, raise your hand on on Zoom or um, just type your question into the chat. I have both that I can see. Don't just unmute. Um, that way I can kind of stop what I'm doing and then give you a chance to talk. But I will see if you raise your hand. I will see if you um, uh, te text in the or put drop something in the chat. Um, but before we get started, um, can you give me a thumbs up or just type into the chat that you can hear me, <laughs> that you're hearing my voice currently and you could see um, what I have posted here? Perfect. Okay. As long as I get a few of you, um, I know that then at least it's being recorded. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump right to the meat of what you guys are responsible for, for 220, 230 that's different. Um, and then if you have questions after I go through the the new stuff, then just let me know. You guys have gone through 110. You guys have gone through uh, 130. Now we're going to crush 220, 230, however we're um, designating that, the review. Um, and you guys are just going to do great. So let's get into it. So this is um, uh, this is the 16 spring practice testing key. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to change the questions. And so that's why I relabeled re it 24 spring, but it's the 16 spring test and key. The reason I'm telling you that is because in a moment, I'm going to change everything. And so all the keys, like this key that's listed here, and I need to minimize this just a little bit. Uh, the key that's listed here, I'm just going to cross it out because it is not going to be applicable after um, after I get done here. Okay. So before I do this monstrosity of a question, I'm going to um, show you how this would be written a little bit more directly, um, how they do it at like some of the other campuses, like at Boyce and North and South, uh, but mainly Boyce is who I'm predominantly working with in addition to Allegheny Campus, but I'll show you what they're doing and how they ask these types of questions. And so it's less overwhelming. Um, but before we do anything, I want to go through these kind of uh, questions that are your infusion rate slash bolus, uh, or these are not bolus, but these are um, infusion questions for heparin infusion and insulin infusion. But going through them will help you out when we go to and do the bolus and more infusion type questions. Um, so as I mentioned before, before I do these, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to be changing the numbers. So that's why the key is going to be different. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to uh, change these up and just make them something very different. Um, just so we can kind of have a little bit of flexibility uh, in what these questions are being asked. So I'm going to say, um, uh, so. So first thing you need to know is heparin is going to be a lot of units, um, but the milliliters typically means that it's a little bit um, a little bit uh, smaller as far as uh, what we're going or what I'm trying to say. The 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 units, it, it's a big number typically. So it's usually like 20,000 units, 25,000 units, 10,000 units. You're going to see big unit numbers when it comes to heparin. Insulin tends to be smaller unit numbers. So like 5, 10, 15, 20. And so it's just different things. So it's a unit of heparin, a unit of insulin. The units are not uh, interchangeable or um, like one unit of heparin is not equivalent to one unit of insulin They're because they're completely different medications. It's just completely, um, it's just a different way to measure the um, the value that is that typical tip or that type of medication. All right. Saying that when you do these infusion rates, basically what this question is asking us is it's asking us to convert one rate to another rate. So a good example of this is if you've ever, uh, if you are an international student, you'll, this will make sense to you. If you've ever traveled internationally, then this will also make sense to you. Or if you've ever looked in the dashboard of your car and wondered, why is there another unit of measurement for driving my vehicle? What I mean is in the United States, we drive at a rate of 
miles per hour. If you were to go across the border into Canada, that would then turn into kilometers per hour. Okay, so it's different unit of measurement. Um, I always say if you're a fr- fan of the show Shit's Creek, it's filmed in Canada, and you could see some of the street signs that are on there, and it's this looks like um, that they're going a lot faster for the number that is listed there. And you're like, oh, how fast is that? Anyways, it's because it's the street signs are in, or the um, the mileage signs are in kilometers, not in miles. So anyways, um, so let's get into and talk about what we're going to do here. We're going to convert units per hour. We're going to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. Okay. Now, the um, the knowing that at least you know kind of where we're starting from, where we're going. This is a different, sometimes a different concept for your some of you guys, and you might get hung up on some of these details. I'm going to show you how I would do it. As long as you're getting the same answer I'm getting then you're doing it right. Okay. That's how I'll kind of leave that for you. Um, the thing that's tricky is this, that it's different. You didn't do this last semester. This is very new. Um, but once we do this a couple of times, I think it'll make sense and then you'll be just fine. Um, so <clears throat> typically we can do this a couple of different ways. I usually like to do it like it's listed here. I like to just start with units per hour and then convert to milliliters per hour using what I have available, which is my IV. Now, keep in mind, IV means that we have 1,250 milliliters of normal saline as well as 20,000 units of heparin. They're in the same bag, okay? So that doesn't change um, where they are, or it doesn't change, um, you know, that you can't separate those two. They're in the same IV solution, just like the normal saline. You can't distill the salt out of it and then just give the patient salt or just give the patient water. We have to kind of work with what we're given here. So knowing that, that at least helps you understand like what to use for when we're doing this conversion of units prior to milliliters prior. So the, um, the order is or it's currently infusing at 750 units per hour. Again, I don't want units per hour. I want milliliters per hour. So hour is fine. I just need to know, can I convert units to milliliters? Okay. And we can. How can we? Well, our available... All right, I'm just going to... So hopefully it'll stop asking me that. My available is the 1,250 milliliters with heparin 20,000 units. So I'm just going to put those values with this, uh, with the uh, units that are listed here. So 1,250 milliliters and then 20,000. And then I'm just going to multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. But before I do anything, I'll, because I'm doing dimensional analysis, I'll already know that I've done it right because the only thing I'm left with is this milliliters per hour. It's what we're looking for. We want milliliters per hour. So that's what this question is asking. Question is asking for an infusion rate question. It's asking, can you convert units per hour to milliliters per hour? Now you know the general setup for doing that. So I'm going to take my phone. which is doubling as my calculator. I'm going to take 750 times 1250. That gives me 9, 9, 937,500. I'm going to divide by 20,000. And I'm going to get a number uh, that says 46.875. Seven five. So whenever we're dealing with flow rates and whenever we're dealing with milliliters per hour and things like that, it's milliliters. We can go to the nearest 10th with these. It's not going to look right. 
I think most of your questions are going to be something uh, giving you a whole number. But given this scenario and given what we know from the um, uh, blue, the CCAC blueprint, you do want to round this answer to the nearest 10th. And so your answer for this question would actually be 46.9 milliliters per hour. If for some reason you take your test, you answer it just like I did, um, and you get it marked wrong, politely and professionally, you know, have a conversation with your instructor. And then if it comes down to it, you can always ask, according to the blueprint, I thought we were supposed to round to nearest 10th of questions like this. This is also how Dr. Rad explained it in the review session. Um, and then that way we can at least figure out and I can, um, you can use me as the guide to say, hey, this is what we were told. He didn't tell us to go up to 47. I would tell you to go to 47 if like the answer was 46.9999999, that's 47. That was just a rounding or a calculator error most likely. So don't, um, but if it's 46.875, the way that um, I've been told on uh, the way that's written in the blueprint, you would round that to the nearest tenth. So the answer I would tell you to write is the 46.9 milliliters per hour for this example. Hopefully you won't get an example like that. It'll just be like a nice even number and you won't have to worry about it. All right. So I'm going to solve that type of question the same way, or I'm going to solve insulin infusions the exact same way. Okay. So my, I'm going to do the exact same thing. The questions are going to be very similar. It's going to tell you you have an IV solution. It's going to tell you that there's insulin in it. And then it's going to give you a flow rate. And here it's listed as units per hour. So just like I did before, I'm going to change some things up. I'm going to make this, I'll leave that at 500. I'm going to change this up to, I'm just going to say 100. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'll leave everything else the same. So I'm going to do the exact same type of setup of a question here where it's asking me the same thing. It's saying, how do I go from units per hour to milliliters per hour? So um, if you have the ability to, um, to do this, go ahead and I want you to try this one on your own. Um, when you get your answer, go ahead and put it into the chat and just put in your answer in milliliters per hour, um, what you get. Um, if you don't want to publicly announce your answer, just in case you feel like maybe it's wrong, just send it to me as a, a direct message. And then that way I will, I will know, but go ahead and try, take your time. All right, answers are pretty much coming in. So you should have gotten an answer and everyone that's answering is getting the right answer. You should have gotten an answer of 50, five, zero milliliters per hour. If you need to see how I would work that out again, I'm going to start with my 10 units per hour. And again, and I had this conversation with the 130 uh, students, if you set this up slightly differently than I am, but you're getting the same answer, just you're doing it, you're, we're we are doing it the same. I'm just writing it out differently. But as long as you're getting the same answer, we're, we're both doing the same things. We're good. 10 units per hour. I'm going to convert units to milliliters. 100 units, 500 milliliters. Multiply across the top, 10 times 500 is 5,000, divided by 100, and that's where you get the 50 mil per hour.
and don't have to worry about rounding with that one, which is great. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the heparin question um, because those two questions kind of help you out with going from units per hour to milliliters per hour, which is a skill you need to know. And then the next, the next thing you need to know is how to go from units to milliliters, but it's the same basic concept. So we're going to talk about that um, here in just a moment with the heparin protocol. So I'm going to show you... Um, just going to get rid of all my highlighting. I'm going to change the patient's weight and we're going to go through all this and I'm going to show you how you can kind of a limp or I'm going to show you how it should be written out because like I said, a lot of this is just redundant and I need to clean this up because it doesn't need to be this difficult. Get rid of that. Okay, we're good here. All right, so this is the this is the way that I've um, the way I was presented with the heparin protocol initially, without ever seeing any other questions for it. It looked like this. It basically was here's the heparin protocol, and you have all these things listed here, and then you guys are seeing this for the first time, going like, "What in the world am I seeing here?" There's a lot of stuff. Okay, so I just want you to know. Like everything that I'm going to put like in a highlight here, I'm going to just go ahead and just highlight it yellow. All that yellow highlight stuff there, that is what's considered the, um, um, I'm going to let you try number 24. And then um, if there's time, we'll go back to it. But I want to um, make sure you guys got this heparin bolus question. But I think you, I think you can do 24 um, if you uh, want to try it. Just put your answer in uh, for number 24. Someone just asked that. I just want to make sure I let them know that I didn't um, miss their question. All right. So on to the heparin protocol. Everything I have bold or listed or highlighted in yellow, if you Google search heparin protocol, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see these 10 steps or actually 15 steps and kind of telling you what to do in, in regards to the heparin protocol. Most students get hung up on all these steps, but really all you're being asked to do is answer some additional questions. So like if I were writing this question or writing this question a little bit more precisely, I would say something like this. I would give you the protocol. I would give you the um, available. So um, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just going to tweak this just a little bit to show you how this sh um, really should look. So give me one second. Just so you know, like, it doesn't have to look like this. And I think at some point in the very uh, near future, it'll look like, um, it'll look more like this. So uh, patient weighs um let's say 137 pounds uh your order is to bolus the patient with heparin um 80 units kilogram per, per uh hour body weight um and then this is going to be your available Be patient with me. Get rid of the yellow. All right. So your patient weighs 137 pounds. The order is to bolus the patient. The available is that. And then you're going to do some calculations. You're going to... Calculate the bolus dose strength 
and then you're going to calculate the um you're going to calculate the bolus dose strength and then you're going to calculate the infusion rate um for this um and then it tells you specifically what we're looking for so this would be a shorthand way of asking the same question that i'm going to go through in just a moment that's considered your heparin protocol okay and then I'll, I'll I'll show you like a variation of this as well. But for if you reference this, I'll leave this as unnumbered. Um, but this would be considered a um, heparin bolus dose question um, alternative, I guess we can say. Just so you know, um, in case you see it uh, like written out a little bit cleaner, you'll at least know that it can look differently. Okay, or look different, but they have to give you the information. The reason I always initially left it as this is because of the fact that um, this is how it would look when you're looking at it. If you did a Google search or you look it up in a book now for steps um, three through nine, you could ignore those. Okay. Steps three through nine tell you nothing about solving this question. It's just procedure and protocol. It's telling you to do checks. It's telling you to do, you know, this, that, or the other thing. That'll all be dependent on the, you know, the emergency room or the the facility that's running this uh, protocol. I'm I'm just letting you know that that's um, what that's related to. This is this boxed in section is important because it'll tell us what to do after they've been on an infusion or the question might say the patient has already been on, you know, and uh, has already been on infusion and it's now going to be changing because their APTT is this, what would you do? And then that's how you kind of navigate this, but I'll, I'll go over all that in just a moment. All right. So what did I do? Um, so, uh, so someone asked, well, the cross stuff stuff won't be on the test. You, like I said, you're going to see everything that's highlighted here in yellow, everything, this whole thing most likely is going to show up on your test. Okay. What I'm telling you is steps three through nine are not something you need to answer. The only thing you're answering is answer the following questions. You're just using the information above that's highlighted in yellow to answer the questions. Okay. So you will see it on your test, most likely if they haven't changed it. I haven't seen your test in a number of semesters to know if they still write it this way, but it's my fault that they are writing it that way. That's why I show it to you so you know what to expect. All right, so let's talk about how to solve this question. So really what we're asking is to answer these questions. These two questions will be listed Okay, as one question. So calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus, calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour for the heparin IV drip. Okay, you'll need to answer those two questions to get this one question correct. So if you miss one, you miss the question. If you miss two, you miss one question. Okay, but after today, if and then after reviewing, you know, on YouTube, uh, you won't miss this question. This question is not a, a challenging one. It's just there's a lot of stuff here and just you just got to realize that it's just the protocol. It's just listing you and telling you all the steps that are involved with the entirety of the protocol. Like I said, my goal is to try and eventually get this to change to where it looks like this because that looks a little bit more manageable, right? You're looking at this and you're like, okay, I can do this. Like even if I labeled this as like, you know, uh, let's just say, you know, A and B, you can you can solve for those. I think you can figure that out. That wouldn't be uh, too challenging to look at. You can say, okay, I can figure that out given this information. And I think this is how it should be listed and hopefully it will be listed at some point in time, okay? All right, so anyways, so I changed the patient's weight. Now, previously I had taught this where I would take the patient's weight in pounds convert it to kilograms, round that number to the nearest 10th, and then continue on solving the rest of the problem. 
I'm still going to do that, but I'm also going to do it what I think is a more accurate way for answering these types of questions, just so you can see, because someone asked me over the um, over the break before, like, I think it was uh, just this, uh, this the other day, and they asked, well, why would you round twice? And I was like, okay, good point. We probably shouldn't be rounding twice. In reality, it probably isn't going to make a difference, but... Um, I want to show you how to do these as we're kind of going through, just so you know, if you have watched any of my other heparin protocol reviews, you might be like, oh, why is he changing this up a little bit? I'm just trying to fine tune how I explain this and how I do this. Like I said, ultimately, if um, if you can look at what I've written here, the heparin bolus dose alternative, basically, if you can look at that and say, oh, I can, I can figure that out. That's not a problem. Then perfect. That's when I look at all that highlighting, this is what I see. I see the important stuff. So my hope is that sometime, at some point in the near future, um, maybe even on this test, I don't know, because I don't know who your instructors are for 22230, um, I can get this uh, straightened out so we can ask the questions more like this. But um, you have this now, you can see this, and then I'll give you another variation of this and we'll just change the patient's weight and I'll have you try it. And then we'll see what the feedback is. Anyways, let's go back up to this monstrosity just because you're probably going to see it. So if I'm doing this, the I, I consider it the way I've previously done it is I would take the patient's weight, 137 divided by 2.2. I would get six point or 62.27 repeating. Okay. So this equals 62.27. Two seven, so it just repeats. So I would typically tell you to round that to sixty two point three kilograms, and then to move on to the remainder of um, the uh, the the test. And I'll show you that way because I think that's the more uh, direct way of like kind of chopping this up. But then I will show you how to do this. Um, uh, I think a little bit more precisely, so you're only rounding one time. In reality, this shouldn't change the overall answer because you have a patient that weighs over 100 pounds. The decimal is not really going to matter in the long term. But it could, so we might as well pay attention to it. All right. So the first question is, calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus. Okay, so I'm going to um, open up the thing here. So in order to answer this question, I need to know how to calculate the bolus, okay? So it tells me to bolus the patient with 80 units per kilogram body weight. So now you know why we had to convert pounds to kilograms because this is a weight-based equation and we have to account for the patient's weight. Now you are gonna see questions like these weight-based questions this semester when you guys take pediatrics, you're gonna see more nuanced weight-based questions um, that have to deal, like I said, with pediatrics. And so you're going to see why that's um, important. But this is also important for our patients who are on heparin because we're using their weight to make sure we don't overdose them on heparin, a blood thinner, right? All right. Um, or an anticoagulant. So we know that the order is the bolus patient with 80 units per kilogram body weight. Great. I have 62.3 kilograms. Great. I have some information here. So let's just start off with what we know based off of what is given. I have uh, 62 point, what did we say? 62.3 kilograms, patient's body weight. And then I'm going to convert or multiply by the 80 units per kilogram. You don't have to write the way I'm writing, but it just helps me. You guys have worked with me now probably a little bit. You realize that I the reason I do this is just so I can show you how I'm getting rid of things. So if you ever get stuck, this is a good way to kind of go back and say like, oh, okay, he was getting rid of kilograms. So that way he can convert to units, okay? So if I take that 62.3 times 80, I'm going to get 4,984. units. Okay. We'd be done if we were just talking about units. And we, we just meant, I just mentioned not too long ago that heparin is measured in units and so is uh, insulin. Okay. But 
the question says calculate the number of milliliters. So I need a way to convert units to milliliters. Okay. So I'm just going to preemptively put this here. I need a way to convert units to milliliters. So I should be able to cross those out. But, and we, we've already talked about this. And this is why I did those uh, number 22 and 23, because we already talked about that. That's where our available comes in. So let's look at our available. Our available is actually written here in step two of the protocol. It tells us that we have heparin, 25,000 units and 250 milliliters half normal saline. So that's one available. And then it specifically says bolus dosage strength of 1,000 units per milliliter. What are we calculating? We're calculating the bolus dose, right? So what's, what um, available am I going to use? I'm going to use the bolus dose. So that 1,000 units per milliliter, I'm going to put that into here. 1,000 units per milliliter. So I'm gonna take that 4,984 divided by 1,000, and I'm gonna get 4.984 milliliters. Now this is a tricky question, so I wanna see what you guys think. We're gonna round this answer. What do you think we should round it to? I know what I would round it to, but what do you think it should round it to? Good. Five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So don't if you're going to talk, um, just raise your hand and I'll call on you or um, just type your answer into the chat. So if you came in late, I said that at the beginning. So but yes, five. Good. Yeah. So we're going to round that. And that's exactly what I would do, because that eight is going to round that nine up anyways. So your answer would just be five mil. What's the difference between four point nine, eight, four and five? Uh, very little bit. <laughs> especially for someone who's 137 pounds, probably not going to make a big difference as far as that. Okay. So we would round that to five mil. So the trick to this question for calculating the bolus is first converting the patient's weight from pounds to kilograms, multiplying by that number by 80. And it's always 80. Anytime you see the heparin protocol question, it's 80 units per kilogram. I've never seen it any other way, probably because that's the standard heparin protocol. And then the bolus is always the same. So you're going to divide by a thousand. So I always say the shorthand for this when calculating the bolus dose strength for like the initial um, bolus is multiply by or take your patient's weight and convert it to kilograms, multiply by 80, divided by a thousand. That's how you would do every single problem like this. Now I said I would show you, I would show you how to do this as far as, just give me one second here. If we're gonna do this the really actual correct way with uh, uh, accounting for rounding, I'm going to show you the alternative way for this, but I we're going to get the same answer. It's still going to be five. It's still going to round to the same answer. The way you typically or technically would want to do this question is you would want to take the patient's weight in pounds. You're dividing by 2.2. Then you would multiply by the 80 units per kilogram I'm saying if you want to be very very direct I just want to show you how this should look but I also wanted to show you that it's going to give you the same answer No. Oh. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the patient's weight 
and that would be pounds. Technically, I'd have kilograms, but I'm just going to put pounds or kilogram here. <clears throat> I would take the 137 times 80, and then I would divide by 2.2, .2, and then I would divide by 1,000. And I would get 4.981, still going to round it to 5. So if you get a situation, I apologize for coughing on, on here. Um, someone went down the wrong way. I'm trying to drink something. Um, but if I'm trying to convert or, or if I'm trying to worry about when I'm doing my rounding, I just want you to know that either way, I'm getting the same answer. Like I said, I got, um, with, without rounding, I get 4.981. So I'm still going to round that to the same number five. <clears throat> so either way you cut it, you're you're probably fine. So if you feel like oh, I'd rather just go ahead and convert pounds to kilograms, which is what I've always recommended to do, you're going to get the same answer. You might be off by a tenth of a question, a tenth uh, or by a tenth potentially, but I would just you might be able to argue that with your professionally and politely argue your uh, your that you were correct um with your instructor so i just want you to know like to do to that you should be able to do that all right now let's do the next question here the next question you'll get asked is to then calculate the iv infusion rate so we the first thing we have to revisit is what are we supposed to do what well, says after we do the bolus, then we start, and it says drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. I think that term makes you automatically think you're going to be doing some sort of drop rate, um, but we're not doing that. So we're just doing, it's going to be flow rate, and we know that because the question says to uh, calculate milliliters per hour. But look what it tells us. It tells us that the drop rate is 18 units per kilogram per hour. So we still have to account for the patient's weight with this. So we're, we're not just doing 18 units per hour. That would be a lot easier because then we wouldn't have to worry about. It would just be units per hour converted to milliliters per hour would be done. But because we're accounting for the patient's weight, that's why this makes this a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to take that same 62.3, right? Because we're talking about the same patient, same weight. 62.3. And I'm just going to multiply by the 18 units per kilogram per hour. And what we're doing is we're eliminating kilograms. And then 62.3 times 18. It's going to give me 1,121.4 <clears throat> units per hour. Now that units per hour should look similar to you, right? Because where have we seen that? We saw units per hour in question 22 and 23, where we it asked you to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. Well, guess what? It's exactly what we're doing, the same thing. It's just that you don't know what the units per hour is because you have to account for the patient's weight. So the next thing is, just like we did in 22 and 23, we have to look at our IV. What do we have available? So go to the protocol, go to step two of the protocol, and it tells us we have heparin, 25,000 units and 250 milliliters half normal saline, and we have a bolus dosage strength of 1,000 units per milliliter. We're not using the bolus dosage strength because that's for bolus only. We're going to use the heparin 25,000 units and 250 milliliters half normal saline. All right. So I don't want units. I do want milliliters. I have 250 milliliters and I have 25,000 units. <clears throat> Let 
Now, if you're looking for a little shorthand, this number right here is equal to 1 over 100. Okay. So really, you just have to divide by 100. If you want to be on, you know, absolute safe side, then please multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. Oh, I see your hand. Give me one minute, moment. <clears throat> and so, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and divide by 100. I'm going to get an answer of 11.214, which I'm going to round to 11.2 mil per hour. All right, go ahead, Lauren. Um, where did you get the 250 milliliters per atom stick? That's okay. So right here, the the available is listed in your um protocol. So right here. Okay, so you're always just using whatever is in number two and and number ten. Like there's nothing else to use to figure out the question. Uh, and then the patient's weight. Yep. Okay. Yes, and then and they're always the same. Got it. It never changes, which is what makes it nice. So here, I'm going to give you guys um I'm going to give you the simplified version that way you're not bouncing all around. So I'm going to come back here to my simplified version. Let me just Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to, um, together, I'm going to have you guys work on this one. I'm going to change the patient's weight. And go ahead and take a few minutes. And um, calculate the bolus and calculate the uh, IV rate given the new patient weight and then following the protocol. And then as always, it, or as I mentioned before, if you when you get an answer, just send it to me as a direct message or you can send it to everyone. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel comfortable doing, we're all learning here. And then I'll confirm the answers and I'll give you a few minutes to kind of work through it. I have a quick question. I don't have a hand on that um, on my screen. Oh, that's OK. Uh, uh, well, go ahead. What's your question? So when you're um converting the pounds to kilogram i know you're supposed to round to the nearest tenth but if your answer is like 65.9 would you say 70 kilograms or would you leave it at 69.9 do you round to the would you round to the whole number because it's 65.9 oh okay so yeah so if you got you said 69.9 65.9 okay yeah so if you got 65.9 uh, in all reality, it's not going to matter. They're, the number's big enough that it's not going to change your final answer. So if you have 65.9, you could just round that to 66 if you wanted to. Or um, I would just say like if that was like the final answer you got or like you had already rounded it from like 65.875 to 65.9, just leave it at 65.9, do the rest of your calculation but because you're dividing by a thousand, dividing by a hundred, a lot of that the des the stuff past the decimal is probably not going to make much of a difference in your final answer. Okay, and then my my second question to that. So if this was like on the questions one through five, where you have to just do strictly pound to kilogram, would this answer be left at sixty five point nine, or would you round it to seventy? So you would never round to seventy because you're going up a whole five pounds. Right. Okay. So, but you would the rule according to the blueprint is to round to the nearest tenth. Oh, wait. okay. All yeah. Right. The, the only time you don't round, um, for in like the initial like first five questions, the only time you do not round is when you're going from metric to metric conversion. So, like if I'm going from milligrams to grams or micrograms to milligrams. If you get an answer of like 1.275, that's your answer. Don't you do not round that to 1.3. And then if you get an answer uh, when you're going from pounds to kilograms, so you might need to um, round to the nearest tenth. Sometimes it's a whole number and you don't have to worry about it. But if it's um, 
But if it's not a whole number, then yeah, you need to round to nearest tenth. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, looks like we're starting to get some answers in. All right. So if you um if you did get 5.3 and 11.9, that's the same thing I'm getting, just so you know. Um and I'm going to show you how I do that. Go ahead, Lauren. Oh. Oh yeah. I am unmuted. Um, so is the 18 units per kilogram per hour. That you said that's always the same for the heparin protocol. Yes. So anytime that you get a question that's considered the heparin protocol, it's always bolus 80 units per kilogram and always starting the drip at 18 units per kilogram. Okay. And then the 250 milliliters per um, 25,000 units, that's like, that can change. Nope. If it's the heparin protocol, that's what it is. So it's almost like it's like kind of like how Tylenol is 375 milligrams. I think that's the strength. It's, it's always that strength. So um, I've never seen the heparin protocol differ from this, but you're always going to like look at the protocol, obviously, and follow what is listed there. Okay. So the only thing changing is the patient's weight. Correct. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. So at least from what I understand, go, getting feedback from students who have taken these tests over the years, the um, the heparin, pro the only thing that really changes is um, the patient's weight. And that's what I've always said is the really the only thing that changes is patient's weight. Now there is a nuance and I'm going to show you that uh, here in just a moment. Um, but uh, meaning like the second part of the protocol is let's say there's a change in the APTT and then we're going to reassess the patient. So, uh, and I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so yeah, so if you got 5.3 mil for the bolus, that's what I got. So this would be 5.3 milliliters. That's the rounded answer. Um, and then 11.9 milliliters per hour. That's what I got for here. Okay, now um, I want you to, this is what I plugged into my phone, my 10 key calculator phone for, um, for each of these things. So for the bolus, I just said I took 145 divide by 2.2 times 80 divide by a thousand. And that gave me 5.272727. So that's 5.3. Okay. And then I did the same strategy in my phone by taking, actually, you know what? Maybe I can, I think I can share my calculator and I can just, I just want to show you like what I'm doing on my calculator that way you can kind of see that you also can do this on your calculator as a quick way to uh to check this so all right so i'm just going to pull up my calculator so it's going to disappear everything else so what i'm doing is i'm taking the patient's weight in pounds so i type in 145 divide by 2.2 then i multiply by 80 because it's 80 units per kilogram then I divide by a thousand 
And then you could see that this is the answer I get. And then we would just round to the nearest tenth, 5.3. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, infusion rate. Uh, I'm going to take 145 pounds, divide by 2.2, times 80. Oh, I'm sorry, times 18, divided by 100. And like I said, I just know I already know that it's that 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 is what that is, and then you get eleven point nine. I'm just trying to show you that if you follow the same basic kind of approach and strategy, it's going to be um, very similar in your answers. So, um, so someone asked me to repeat A again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do A, but I'm going to do it in the other variation um, because we're running a little bit low on time here. But let me um, let me switch over. And then I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do this other variation with the, the six hours stuff. All right. So it in the. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the times 80 divided by a thousand is for bolus. Uh, patient's weight in pounds, convert to kilograms, multiply by 80, divide by 1,000. But again, all I'm doing is following what the protocol says. What does the protocol say? Bolus, 80 units per kilogram. And then I'm uh, converting the bolus of units into milliliters. So it's basically, like I said, it's the same thing. You've done this. You've done this hundreds of times. It's just the wording's a little bit different. All right. So... <clears throat> The other variation that you might see is it might tell you some more information. It might say after six hours, the patient has um, an APTT of 43. So that's where these other um, question or parts of the um, protocol come into play, where you have to look at the APTT for each of the different things. So I said 43. So that means we're going to look at step 12 here. And then what does step 12 tell us to do? It says to rebolus now with 40 units per kilogram and then to increase the rate by two, okay? And then that goes hand in hand with these other questions here. It says calculate the number of the milliliters to prepare uh, for the bolus and then calculate the new infusion rate in milliliters per hour. So the... Um, the new infusion rate is going to be based off of, so I'm just going to kind of add some text here. The new infusion or the new bolus is going to be based off of 40 units per kilogram instead of, instead of um, the, uh, the 40 units per kilogram instead of what we initially started out with the 80 units per kilogram. So, uh, so someone asked me where I'm getting 100 from. Remember that was the 250 over 25,000. You don't have to do it that way. Um, I just know that that number is 100. I'm just trying to simplify it for myself while I'm answering that. But if you go back in the recording, you'll see where I showed you, I highlighted and here I'll, I'll show it to you again. I took 250 over 25,000, that's the same thing as one over 100, okay? All right. And then it says to calculate the new infusion rate, it said to increase it by two units per kilogram per hour. Well, what was the original? The original was 18. So if I increase it by two, then my new infusion rate is 20 units per kilogram per hour, right? Because my initial was 18, and then it says to increase it by two. So you might see this where you have to kind of update that question um, or update that, uh, that, that units, but there's only a few scenarios in which that would occur. You can see it might need to increase by four. It might need to increase by two. It might need to decrease by two. So if it started at 18, and then it decreases by two, that would make it 16, or it might need to decrease by three. So 18 minus three would give you 15 units per kilogram per hour. Like I said, you'll see examples of this. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that you are going to see that on the test. 
I just like to give you some additional like challenges. And that way, when you go through it and you get it, you're like, oh, I got it. Um, but let me let me work through these first. I just wanted you to know where we got. Um, I'm hoping that you see where we got. This was explicit. 40 units per kilogram tells you right here. Okay. Tells you 40 units per kilogram. And then where it says to increase the rate by two, says it right there. What was our original rate? Our original rate was 18. So 18 plus two is 20. So the only thing I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to um, account for the patient's weight. So I'm going to take 62.3 kilograms times the units per kilogram. And then I'm going to um, account for the bolus. What was the bolus? So remember in the protocol, it tells us the bolus is what? 1,000 units. That's why I keep saying divide by 1,000. For bolus, multiply by 80, divide by 1,000, unless it tells you otherwise. Multiply by 40, divide by 1,000. So I'm still going to write this out kind of oddly. I'm just trying to do this real quick just so you can kind of see and then get an answer. So when you practice this on your own, okay? Um, and then, like I said, we can come back and talk more about this in the next um, the next uh, review session that I think at five o'clock. Um, so I'm just going to take my 62.3 times 40 divided by 1,000. I'm going to get 2.492. Remember, our original was 5. So now we're just cutting it in half. So 2.5 milliliters for the new bolus. Okay. And then for the new infusion rate, 62.3. And then... I'm just going to, I'll do it this way just because, so I'm not losing you guys. This, what I'm writing right here, the 250 ml over 25,000 units, it's the same thing as one over 100. Okay. So if I take 250 divided by 25,000, that'd be one over 100. If you don't like what I'm saying there, just do the multiply by 250 divided by 25,000. We're going to get to the same answer. Okay. So for this, now I'm going to get 62.3 times 20 times 250 divided by 25,000. I'm going to get 12.46, and I'm going to round that to 12.5 milliliters per hour. So if you're able to come into the second hour, um, the, um, um, just make sure or if you come into the second hour, um, just know that I'm going to, I'll try and pick up where we left off here. Like this is the, probably the one that we need to spend the most time on because it's so new for you guys. Um, the, some, whoever asked me about the, um, uh, question 24, just try and work that through yourself. And if you have a question or, or once you get an answer, just message it to me. But the key is correct for that question. So as long as you're getting the same answer, you should be good. Um, and then if you need to see it, just remind me um, at the five o'clock hour. So, um, all right. So I apologize for rushing you guys off, but um, I need to take a short break here. I will be back on at five for um, the second part of this review. Thanks for attending.